there will be no way for us to be able to solve every single problem of migrant workers here in Thailand. The only way we can do it, we need to have them to speak up about the problem. We need to have them form their own organization representing themselves. That's Asrin Kalpradap interpreting for Sawit Kawan, the Secretary General of the State Enterprises Workers' Relations Confederation, or CERC, Thailand's largest union confederation. Asrin is with the Solidarity Center in Thailand. My name is Judy Gerhardt, and this is The Labor Link, a podcast about workers' rights and global supply chains where we share the personal stories and perspectives of the men and women organizing the workers who make our stuff. In the early 90s, I got my first view of global supply chains working with coffee farmers and women apparel workers in Mexico. I've since had the chance to work with many amazing worker organizers and community leaders. I've marched with, fundraised for, and helped connect some incredible worker rights advocates to policymakers and corporate executives. I am super excited to help share their stories. I hope you find them as inspiring as I do. This podcast is a collaboration between the Accountability Research Center and Empathy Media Lab. To hear more podcasts about workers' rights, visit laborradionetwork.org. And for more about migrant workers in Thailand, check out solidaritycenter.org for their podcast with Preeta. So you may ask why we kick off a podcast about global supply chains with the head of a public sector union. Two reasons. The first has to do with Sawit's strategic approach to organizing and deep commitment to worker solidarity. The second is because Sawit and 12 of his colleagues are currently facing criminal charges and up to three years in jail for their organizing. Ostensibly, the case against them is about a campaign for railway safety they launched back in 2009. But moreover, Sawit has effectively mobilized the Thai labor movement to support migrant worker rights. He has challenged the Thai authorities on their lack of protections for migrant workers, which leave them vulnerable to forced labor and human trafficking issues that are a stain on Thailand's international reputation. I spoke with Sawit about his vision for building a more inclusive labor movement. His comments provide a clear view into the long-term work of movement building and the personal risks that come with it. So my name is Sawit Gawan. I am the General Secretary of CERC. I have been elected as the Jersey Secretary of CERC since 2007, but I would like you to know that CERC has been found since 1980. And my name is Asarin Gerbredal. I am the program officer with the Solidarity Center here in Thailand, but I have been involved in the labor movement for the past 15 years. So CERC is a UN confederation, national confederation, where a majority of our members come in from the state-owned enterprises. But CERC has changed our constitution in order to allow private sector and some other group of labor to join us as a member as well. So we have changed our constitution for the purpose of opening our union to be broader. So one main mission of CERC is to call for labor movement on anti-privatization. The second one is anti-corruption. The corruption has been a long time issue for Thailand. The level of transparency is very low and the government has a lot of corruption that's going around in every state enterprises and government agencies. The, the third mission for CERC is strengthening the labor movement through collective bargaining, organizing workers, and organizing young workers in particular, and also women workers. So we changed our constitution to allow young workers and women workers to have the representation in the board committee of CERC. 10 years ago, we started to strengthen the labor movement through organizing informal workers and migrant workers, and also a group of state employees who by law, not allowed to organize or form trade units. Government employees that have a short-term contract with the government agency are not allowed to organize. So circus strengthened the, the labor movement through this group of informal migrant workers and also temporarily government employees. How many members does CERC have and how many sectors are you covering in total? ตอนนี้มีสมาชิกอยู่ที่เป็นด้านวิสาหกิจ 
So recently we have 42 affiliates in transport sector, banking sector, telecommunication, agriculture, and public services. And we also have one private union that joined us and one government employees that has joined us with the total membership of 170,000 across all the sectors. Sergey is also a member of the International Trade Unions Confederation, the ITUC. Can you describe what are the challenges that you face in organizing Thai workers? What kinds of exploitation are you addressing? Challenges that we see is the attitude of the ruling class. They see the trade unions as a troublemakers. Their attitude is totally against the labor movement, totally against trade unions. Our Labor Relations Act is very outdated. It is more about controlling, investigating the labor movement or the unions rather than giving freedom of association to the workers. So the law do not allow the workers to freely organize and freely exercise their basic rights. I wanted to know more about how Sawi, despite most of Cirque's members being Thai nationals, had decided to actively support migrant workers and challenge government policies. Thailand has a significant migrant worker population, and in 2014, media exposés revealed corrupt government officials were involved in human trafficking in the seafood industry. Thanks to journalists, awareness about forced labor and human trafficking in Thailand surged. I knew Sawit had been working on migrant issues well before those exposés on the seafood industry, so I asked for his perspective. So, in 2001, we see migrant workers' issue has been around human trafficking, violating migrant rights, and a lot of um, discrimination against migrant workers in all sectors, not just in seafood. We have been discussing in the Thai Labor Solidarity Committee, where Sawit was the president back then in 2005. We were like, we cannot see migrant workers being violated or discriminated like this anymore. We need to bring the issues to the streets. To the streets mean that we need to campaign what is going on for migrant workers, make the public and the union to understand that migrant workers have been violated so badly. They become a victim of human trafficking. So we first started to have migrant workers to get involved in our union activities, in our national marching, rally, put their issues on the streets. So back in 2007, Sawit became elected as the General Secretary of CERC, and he see that CERC has a bigger role in changing the national policy. CERC has ability to change that. So that's how we started to get involved and make the union to understand that migrant issues is related to our union issues too. So how did you convince the Thai labor movement to support you? At the very beginning stage where we bring up migrant workers' issue on the streets, the Thai labor movement also has the same attitude toward migrant workers aside than the Thai government. Basically, thinking that migrant workers come and do job doing a lot of bad things here in Thailand, so they have a very bad or negative attitude against migrant workers too. But back when the LSC was having a very lead role, the Thai Labor Solidarity Committee, where Bata Sawit is the president of TLSC right now too. TLSC is a combination of the labor movement, the unions, and also the NGOs. We found out that NGOs are very good in gathering information, bringing cases to migrant workers to solve their individual issues. But the union see the way that the NGO is working is more like providing information, but in terms of changing the law, changing the policy, the national policy, it is something that it has to be the union role. So we don't think that we can solve all individual cases of Mike and work any longer. So organizing Mike and workers and put them in the, the role that the union is the solution for them the role that Freedom Association and Collective Bargaining is going to be the solution for migrant workers is something that we would like to make sure that migrant workers can also be able to organize 
and even the law don't allow them to organize, but somehow we need to give some space for them to have their own organization. So one question people ask is, there's a lot of forced labor abuse among migrant workers, and it's urgent to address those cases. And there's this pressure to save individual cases to the point where it's hard to focus on building the broader movement. And I'm wondering what Sawit would advise for that tension between the two approaches. There's a problem since the receiving country like Thailand doesn't have a very good system to systemize the way to respond to forced labor or human trafficking issues. So we have particularly under this COVID situation, thing has been reviewed that the government doesn't have a good system to take care of that. Then he wants to repeat that. Just go back to the attitude of the ruling class, the government people seeing the union as a threat to them as a troublemakers. The union has been proposing to the government every time when we have a meeting, all the stakeholders has to work together, the government employers and workers, which means the, the union has to work together cooperatively. But the union was the one who have proposed that, but never get any response from the government because the attitude is totally against them. We always said that you don't have enough resource person, labor inspectors, or government officer to take care of all forced labor individual cases. But there is a mechanism there, which is trade union mechanism, who can be an eyes and tools to help the government. But we have been rejected to have the union involvement in that because of the policies of the government is totally anti-trade unions. So he's pretty much representing Thai nationals. Like 99% of them are Thai nationals. And he sets out with this agenda to really work with migrant workers and support them. And if he can talk a little bit about the things that Cirque has done, the strategies and the actions taken. In state enterprises, 70 to 80 percent are the union member. We have majority of state-owned enterprises union that have majority of the membership already. But he can say that you need to go back to the the very beginning of bringing migrant workers' issues to the Thai labor movement. Ten years that he has been using his effort to change that. It is something that not easy at all because the attitude of Thai workers against migrant workers is totally negative. But we have one face that we already said that all workers are brothers and sisters, whether they're migrant workers or whether they're informal workers, where they come from. We shouldn't discriminate it against them. We are not just working alone. We have the global union federations. Whenever we need help, they are there for us. The international labor movement always be there for us. The international solidarity is really important and for us to, to work together. So even though they are migrant workers, we also need to provide assist them, we need to support them, we need to do everything to blend them to our union family. I asked Sawit to describe what they meant by taking the issues to the street in terms of organizing activities. I wanted to know what specific activities they did. It is the very first time that I'm using that opportunity to change the labor movement attitude against migrant workers through organizing seminars, forum, migrant workers to speak about the difficulties living in entire land, being a victim of human trafficking, being a victim of discrimination. One of the very important points that bring the change of migrant workers into the Thai labor movement is back in 2009, where Sawit was representing the Thai union delegates in the International Labor Conference, he went there together with the complaint of the construction workers case where he entered the country illegally, but there was an accident back then that he needed the medical assistance, but he'd been rejected by the Thai government because he's considering as an illegal migrant workers. So we bring the case 
together with the assistant from the Human Rights Development Foundation. And Sawit himself presented the complaint to the compensation specialist there in Geneva back in 2009. So with that, we got a resolution from CERC that we cannot accept this. We cannot accept that construction workers working here in Thailand, even his undocumented, he illegal come to the country, but he shouldn't be discriminated against this medical assistant. So we bring that case and that it made the government losing that case that uh, we misrepresent Thailand, go to Switzerland, go to the ILO headquarters and submit that complaint against the Thai government. So we get resolution for that on CERC and that's how we see that, oh, we got the whole labor movement to support migrant workers and they cannot accept that migrant workers being discriminated by the Thai government. Just to explain, the ILC, the International Labor Conference, is the annual meeting of the International Labor Organization. Representatives from employers, unions, and governments from 187 member countries come together to advance international labor rights norms and review complaints when those norms are violated. I asked Sawit how the Thai government reacted when CERC took a migrant workers' rights case to the ILO. When we submitted the complaint to the compensation specialist in the ILC, the Thai government was shocked. They came to Sawit and asked him, like, why are you losing the government phase? Why are you doing this without our consultation? Sawit was very clear to them. I am representing the workers. I'm doing my job. You represent the government. You do your job. I don't need any intervention from here. We're trying to fix things since we were in Thailand, but the government rejecting that. The government doesn't want to help migrant workers. So this is a way that we can show to the international how the Thai government dealing with the issues of migrant workers. So we can see that the government is not at all happy when we are bringing things to the international level. Under Sawid's leadership, CERC supported the formation of several initiatives to help migrant workers, starting with the Migrant Worker Rights Network, or MWRN, an organization founded by migrant worker leaders from Myanmar. I asked about CERC's support for these groups. I've been discussing that there will be no way for us to be able to solve every single problem of migrant workers here in Thailand. The only way we can do it, we need to have them to speak up about that problem. We need to have them to form their own organization representing themselves. We need to have them to voice themselves when they need to change their working condition. So we come up with the idea that why don't we have migrant workers to form an organization that can represent them. So we need to make sure that in the URN, is organizing under the Freedom Association rights. Their organization is more like trade units. They have the committee member structure. They have the duty induced structure. And we go around the country. We go to Songkhla, where there's numbers of seafood factories there. We organize international migrants day there. We promote the international migrants day in Samusa Khon, where numbers of migrant workers are working there as well. One more point. CERC has been seeing that MLMN couldn't be able to continue because majority of their committee member are those workers working in the factories. So working in the factory means that the, the company is the one providing that visa, work permit, and everything for them. So CERC, State and Crisis Labor Relation Confederation Foundation was formed. In order to be a legal organization, employer who can issue work permit and visa for those migrant workers to be able to legally work here in Thailand. So we are providing work permit and visa for them to work here in Thailand legally. Recently, we hired 16 migrant workers. Migrant workers in Thailand are not legally allowed to form and lead their own trade unions. And in many low-wage industries, the majority of the workers are migrants. That effectively means they cannot exercise their rights to organize and bargain collectively. Starting the CERC Foundation is another creative strategy to support migrant worker leaders. I also asked about CERC's collaboration with the Fisher Rights Network, an initiative formed by the International Transport Federation, or ITF, which is forging ahead organizing migrant fishers who are among those most vulnerable to human trafficking. 
the official rights network, the FRN is one of the campaign that the ITF is bringing to promote the union rights here in Thailand. Sir, when we see that FRN is trying to promote union rights for migrant workers here in Thailand for the fishermen, we're happy to support them. So, sir, board committee member totally agree to support ITF FRN to organize the rights network because most of the services in agriculture, transport sector, or public service industry, we have our member across Thailand. So CERC has just promoted nine branches of CERC in the northern part of Thailand, in the northeastern part of Thailand, and the southern part of Thailand. When we're talking about seafood industry or migrant workers in the southern part of Thailand, of CERC is the one who are looking after migrant workers there. So we give all the authority for the branches to be able to solve that one issue and allow them to take lead role to help migrant workers in our branches too. When there's some migrant issues, committee members of each branch will take care of the, the issue locally. They can talk to the police, they can bring the issue to the provincial labor ministry, for example. But when it comes to like national level or national policy, when things cannot be fixed there in the local area, they will send it to CERC and CERC will be the one presenting the issues to the Ministry of Labor. This is a very impressive vision and movement that you've been building. The last couple questions are really about how the international community can be more helpful in supporting the changes that you're driving for. But I also want to give a chance to Sawi to talk about the pressure that he's under because He's had this big vision and he's been a very important leader in building a bigger, broader movement. And he's got some particular pressures on him. So I, I want to give a moment for him to talk about that if he would like to. <laughs> The labor movement nationally together with international labor movement has to work cooperatively together to push forward the importance of migrant issues because the investor, the employer has their own connection, has their own network internationally too. So we labor movement cannot just fight to protect migrant worker rights just among us. If we can work together with the international labor movement and with a network of customer or country who buy the products from Thailand to see that there's some violations, some discrimination or labor issues there. It is very important for us to give the pressure to the Thai government that if you really want to trade or doing some business with international, you need to respect the labor rights. So this kind of pressure from all the stakeholders internationally has to be there to protect migrant worker rights. Does he want to speak at all about the pressures he's facing? His case and the another 12 fellow union leaders of the State Railway Workers Union of Thailand facing the National Anti-Corruption Agency that has been fought against the union leaders of this RUT is clear that because Saudi is a national trade union leaders who fight against privatization, who fight against corruption, who are uh, bringing migrant workers' issue to uh, the society. There was a train derailment in the southern part of Thailand, and it's killed seven people and 100 injured. Back then, when we see the unit immediately take action, telling the workers that do not operate the train because only 30% of the train system here in Thailand working. So the 70% of dead man control vigilance systems or some other safety system was not working. And there was a CBA between the union and the company that safety train is under the CBA. So before the, the, the workers operating the train, the train has to be fully functioned. So the union is going out take action by calling for safety campaign. But according to the Labor Relations Act and with the Labor Court, they interpret the action from the union as a strike. So basically, when it's come to strike, the state enterprises, labor relations, 
employees are not allowed to go on strike. So the government filed the case against the union on that. So Sawit was fired and another 12 fellow committee member also get fired. So with that case, 10 years after that, back in 2018, before the case will be withdrawn, we just found out that the company actually filed a criminal charge against them. So the case is almost expired. The company filed the criminal charge against them from calling or convincing the workers to go on strike, which by law, under State Enterprise Labor Relations Act, is prohibited for the state enterprises workers to go on strike. So that case related to that. And we are clear that what happened to Sawit was political um, pressure because what we see is whatever he has been doing for the past many decades that he has been the leader of the National Trade Union Confederation, anti-privatized corruption and also helping migrant workers is part of the reason that the government disliked him. We know exactly that what we did was to protect the public interest. But he said that we're fighting since 2009 until now, 12 years already, we're still fighting for it. And I just believe that what we are doing is the right things to do. Even he himself is going to end up to jail. He will accept the circumstances because he doesn't see anything wrong at all from our union side. But it is about the political involvement just to destroy the union. I am incredibly humbled and honored that he is willing to give this time. I'm still lighting a candle, hoping that he doesn't end up in jail because it's just such a great injustice after all that he has done. So migrant workers issue here in Thailand won't be an easy fix because he thinks that after this COVID-19, it will be worse. There will be numbers of workers, even tidy workers, more fragile. So he think that thing has been changed a lot in terms of the labor law, but still the enforcement is not there. This COVID-19 is showing that whatever they're trying to change in policy level, it is not being enforced. After this COVID-19, all the international labor rights organizations or the international organization needs to work together and particularly to the U.S. government or the international communities has to really spotlight to, the, to Thailand as a country that we want to see how we fix it after this because there will be a lot of unemployment. It will never be an easy fix for us on migrant workers issue here in Thailand. But I'm going to and Judy, he just wants to thanks to everyone that has been totally supportive to Thailand and put your attention to Thailand. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you, Judy. So just to sum up and highlight the irony here, Sawit Kalan has mobilized national union support for migrant workers supported the forming of three organizations that help migrant workers and address the risks of forced labor, and offered to work with the government to monitor and prevent forced labor and other abuses. Meanwhile, the Thai government has been under steady pressure since the 2014 exposés and before to address forced labor and other migrant worker abuses, yet they are currently trying to put Sawi and his colleagues in jail. Of course, Sawit has challenged the Thai government nationally in CERC's campaign for railway safety and by taking complaints to the International Labor Organization. But they're basically exerting citizens' rights to freedom of expression and to seek access to remedy. All in all, it's hard not to see how the case against Sawit is political. It's a clear sign of efforts to restrict civic freedoms and, depending on the court case outcomes, may result in a tremendous miscarriage of justice against one of the most consequential human rights leaders in the country. For more information about Sawit's trial and that of his colleagues, you can write to Dave Welsh, D-W-E-L-S-H, at SolidarityCenter.org. Thank you for listening. I hope you'll join us next time. <laughs>